All righty, so you guys are here for the songwriting session, right? You gonna write a song together? Yes. You're songwriters, right? Yes. Awesome, cool. Well, the most important thing that we need to know is, has anybody here ever heard two songs back to back and liked one song more than the other song? Yes. Anybody? Raise your hand. Raise show of hands. Okay, that is proof to me that you guys have the one tool you need to be a songwriter. It's what I call your songwriter compass. It's a little voice in your head, your heart, that says one of a couple things. It says either, yeah, I like that, or it says, eh, not so much, okay? And that is the only tool you need to be a songwriter. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, when you're writing a song, there's kind of three major steps I think we can agree on. There's starting a song, finishing a song, and everything in the middle, okay? Let's look at that thing in the middle first, okay? Now, when you're writing a song, you're repeating, if you take it down to its most granular level, you're repeating one simple action again and again and again. What is that, anybody? Chords, close, but what, what do you do with those chords? Okay. Bard, melody, words, what else? What do you do with it? What do you make with those things? You use it. In order to, new, to decide to use it, what do you make? A choice, exactly. So you make choices. All you're doing the entire time you're writing a song is you're making choices. Do I like that note? Do I like that word? Do I like that chord? Do I like that piece going there? And what do you use to make that choice? Your songwriter compass. So each stage of the way, you either say, I like that, or mm, I don't. And if you, if you don't like it, what do you do? It doesn't mean it's a bad song. It doesn't mean you're a bad songwriter. It means that you know there's a better choice there, so you make a different choice. So when a song is done, that's the middle, right? It's just that same process over and over, making choices till you find a song you like, different choices you like. A song is done, when you get to the end, and you play the song from beginning to end, and what happens? You like it the whole way through. What does, what does maybe mean? Anybody? No. Because you don't want a maybe song. You want a yes. Okay? So we've got the middle. We've got the end. The beginning of the song brings me to a whole another idea of language. There's a whole broken language of creativity that's taught to us. It's one of the reasons why we think we can't create. There's a whole set of false assumptions that come down from history that kind of cloud our minds when it comes to being creative. Some of the language, like following your muse, being inspired. Let's break those down for a second. What are the muses? Right? They're these Greek demigods who the Greeks believed had all the ideas. They lived halfway up Mount Olympus. They would dig into their little vat, pick out an idea, throw it down, fly down, and an idea would come to you. Well, even, even the very language of that is, is very passive, right? The idea comes to you. It comes from the outside. Like the word inspire. Seems pretty cool, right? Be inspired. But again, the etymology of inspire is filled with the spirit. The gods are giving you the idea. Now, I've got nothing, nothing against the gods giving us ideas, but I'd like a lot more control than that. Uh, so what I came up with on a thing called, what I call the jumping off point. You just make a choice. Try anything, a word, a chord, a lyric, anything, and you're going to do one of two things with it. You're either going like to like it, in which case you keep it and go on down the line, or you don't like it, in which case make another choice. So jumping off point, the middle part, finishing it, those are the big steps. We're going to use that process so you guys can make your song. We're going to write a song together. Now, I, I break the song itself down into four major components, four kind of facets, kind of like baskets of choices, if you will. A couple of them are familiar to, I think. Music, makes sense. Lyrics or words, right? Then I also add two more. Rhythm, which I include structure in that, and emotional center. So, music, words, rhythm, emotional center, and all of them are controlled by your songwriter compass that says, I like those choices, okay? Let's start with emotional center, because that's probably the one that's least intuitive, okay? Now, what is an emotional center? Have you ever heard a song that made you feel something? Anybody? So the song made you maybe feel sad or made you feel happy or you're in a, a really bad breakup and the one song really spoke to you? 
okay? That's that song's emotional center. And as a songwriter, you have control over creating that. Now, one of the false assumptions that a lot of songwriters get wrong, too, is they think that you have to be in that emotional place in order to write about that emotional place. And sometimes you are, and that's great, but sometimes you're not. Who was, maybe in the last week, who was angry? Anybody angry at some point? How about scared? Sad? Okay, let's think of emotional centers kind of like um, filters. So let's say happy is, is yellow, okay? If I'm happy right now, and I'm writing a song about being happy, so there's the feeling I'm having, there's the feeling the song is about, so the yellow plus the yellow is gonna make a song that's really happy, right? And if I'm feeling sad, feeling really blue and down, and I'm writing a sad song, the sadness I'm feeling is really gonna be amplified by the sadness in the song, so it's gonna be just full of anguish and angst. And ah! Now, but what, if I'm, what if I'm feeling sad, and I'm writing a song about being happy? Can you see how there would be like a, the sadness I'm feeling is gonna give me a whole different perspective on that, on that happiness that I'm writing about. There's gonna be a yearning, there's gonna be a, you know, a reaching out for that. So that's emotional center. I'll give you an idea of, like, okay, so let's say you wrote a song. Someone wrote a song that was so psychotic and so angry and so full of intensity that a mass murderer and his followers knew, absolutely knew without a shadow of a doubt the song was written about them. You'd have to be pretty psychotic to write that song, right? Well, when Paul McCartney wrote the song Helter Skelter, he was not particularly psychotic. He was actually very excited because he heard the Who song, I Can See For Miles. He said, that song really rocks. I can write a song that's that intense. And so he wrote the song Helter Skelter. When Charles Manson and his followers heard the song, they're like, he writing, the Beatles made a song about us. The emotional center was what connected them, okay? Let's look at the next piece, rhythm. One of the false assumptions about rhythm is that you got rhythm or you don't. Well, wouldn't it be great if, if we all had like a, a, a drum machine inside us? or like a beatbox inside to give us the rhythm. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Well, we do, right? It's called a heart. You've got a drum machine inside you that's beating, 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 and your breath is rhythm. Your body is a symphony of rhythm. You can't, look, look at me moving, I'm walking. Uh, everything I'm doing is based on rhythm and movement. You are a walking drum machine. Okay, and, and language, language is built on rhythm, right? I mean, like, every sentence has a rhythm. Da-da, da-da-da-da-da. Da, da, da. Every sentence has a rhythm. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Everything you say, everything you do is built on rhythm. And you're saying, ah, oh, come on, but we're talking about songs here. Well, songs are based on dancing and movement, right? They're mostly twos, threes, and fours. Heck, oh, I should have checked earlier. Um, who here can count to four? Oh, thank goodness. Okay. You never know. Okay, let's all count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, can I clap for three, four. One, two, three. Every sentence has a rhythm. Every sentence has a rhythm. Okay, see how we're already there? Okay. Now, and you think, well, but, but you're, you're like, come on. What about real songwriters? Well, the Bee Gees were traveling in their tour bus. Tour bus went over one of those metal bridges. You know, they have the, like, the little ridges, right? The wheels of the tour bus were making a grinding noise on the bridge. Like, you know, you've done that, right? The Bee Gees started tapping the rhythm on the, on the chair seats in their tour bus. And they started singing along with the bridge. And made up a song. Jive talking, spreading your lies. Jive talk. The rhythm is everywhere. Okay? It's everywhere. Now, the next piece, music. One of the false assumptions about music is that you need to be, you're not trained in it, right? You're like, I don't know how to write. I don't know music. Ralph, you're a musician. You know that stuff. Well, there's a grain of truth in that, but it's, it's a broken truth. Okay? 
Let's talk about polo. Who here has ever seen a polo match? Okay, who here has ever watched 10 hours of polo in their life? Okay, I guess I'm glad I didn't do the everybody can play polo, Ted speech. That would be not quite so easy. Okay, how about music though? Who has listened to a song before? How about 10 hours of songs? How about 10,000 hours of songs? Well, I'll give you a clue. If you listen to two songs a day, you'd be at 100,000 hours of songs by this point in your life. Well, maybe not you. <laughs> Although, I haven't checked your iPhone. Maybe. <laughs> okay? Your songwriter compass, your music brain is incredibly sophisticated. You have listened to so much music. I mean, you can tell with your favorite group what songs you like and what songs you don't like. You know the difference between Metallica and Mozart. You can tell the difference between Bach and Beethoven. You can tell the difference between the Beatles and a song by John Lennon when he wasn't in the Beatles. Your brains are so, so hundreds of thousands of hours, and that's all there guiding your songwriter compass. So all you need to do is make those choices. And, you know, let me give you some, uh, some simple tools that we can use. We'll use the it's a guitar, but we'll use the white keys. Okay, I'll just use the notes of the white keys. Um, the do, re, mi scale. I'm going to teach you a really great trick. Most musicians don't know this. Okay, this is secret information. You guys signed the confidentiality agreement, right? Oh, no, they're going to put this online. Oh, darn it. Oh, well, it's out there now. Okay, here's a great fact. You know what a scale is, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So, okay. Right? That's a note scale. Every note scale has a corresponding chord scale. Just take every other note of the, of, the, of the note scale, you get the chord. So this nut note scale of the corresponding chord scale would be okay. Every note of the note scale is harmonically pleasing with every chord of the chord scale. And there's only seven notes. This is not complicated, people. There's only seven notes, only seven chords in the scale, and they all sound good with all of them. Hard to go wrong. <laughs> okay? So, somebody give me a number between one and seven. Four. Six and a four. Well, the six will be the, the, the note. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, four was the chord, which would be the fourth chord. Na. Another one. Three. Three. And another one? Five. So the three note against the five. Those are the two things you guys gave me. <laughs> What's your songwriter compass saying? It's kind of okay, right? I think we're coming up with a song already. Okay. Now, we haven't gotten to words yet. Now, words are important. We know words have rhythm. Now, let's start putting the pieces together here. In that melody, right, were you starting to feel some emotional center? Is there, a, he just in those couple random notes, right? We're already saying, I do it again. And just feel the, if it has like, some emotional center in it, right? I don't know why, but that's the way the human brain, one of the things that happens with music, the human brain finds meaning in it, okay? It finds meaning, it finds the rhythm in it, and it puts them together. Now, one of the things you guys did during the day is they had a box out there, and people made random phrases. This is all from you guys, okay? So I'm going to just throw some of these things out here, and, and if, if you guys hear one you really like, everybody shout, yeah. Cabbages and roses grow together? Yeah. Okay. Um, maximum impact occurs in three seconds? Hot dogs are awesome? Yeah. Okay, we've got a songwriter compass there. <laughs> Let's see. So we got that melody thing, and we're kind of, I'm going with the beat you guys gave me. That, mm, so. Hot dogs are awesome. Hot dogs are awesome. We need another line here. Let's see. Um, 
Uh, we need one about the same line. White wine gives me headaches. Well, <laughs> do you like it or no? Okay. I mean, we could change it. It's your song. Okay. Hot dogs are awesome. White wine gives me headaches. I'm liking it so far. Okay. Now, so we've got to start. Now, one of the things about melodies is melodies can go... I haven't even talked much, but we don't even, you guys already know words. I mean, right? Who's used language this week? Okay. Who's written an email and thought about what words they were going to use? Okay. So you use your songwriter compass already. Words you guys have down. Words you guys got. You don't need to be a poet, right? We use language all the time. And language has rhythm. It has rhyme. These things we can use, okay? Um, so white wine gives me headaches. Hot dogs are awesome. Melodies tend to do one of four things. They go straight, they go down, they go up, and they zigzag. Do you guys have a preference? Because here's, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm driving at. We've got a great verse coming here, right? We need the big sing-along chorus, right? Because this is our hit song we're gonna write together. So we need a big, do you guys, how, what do you want for the melody? You wanna go up, down, zigzag, thoughts? Up, okay. So we're going to have a, the chorus melody is going to be one that goes up. Give me a couple numbers. Let's randomly, you don't have to randomly. David Bowie and Brian Eno, when they made Bowie's Low album, did the same thing. Actually, they did the melodies and chords randomly like this. So it, it can happen, but you don't have to. But we're going to use it. So give me some numbers. Four, two, and what? 52. <laughs> I love you. When I teach songwriting, one of the things that I make my, my songwriting students pledge, and I'm gonna, I, we're going to do it. Everybody, this is outside. This is not my speech, but we're going to do it. Everybody, what, raise one hand. My Ralph Covert songwriting pledge is anytime you discover a rule of songwriting or something that somebody tells you is a rule of songwriting or something that your intuition tells you ought to be a rule of songwriting, you promise me that you will break it. Okay? That's why I love you. Awesome. So we're going to have a, a, a rising line. We had uh, some twos and some threes. So the two chord would be this. And the three note. Da, 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 da. Like that? Or, or even more zigzaggy. Da, 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 da. Like that? Which one? Like first or the second one? Second one? Okay. So we need some words for our chorus. Let's see what we have here. Who's your daddy? Uh, and I, I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Is that a winner? Okay. So we'll do the, repetition is important in song range. We're gonna do the who's your daddy, who's your daddy, and then we'll do the I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Okay, so be like, you guys like that zigzaggy one, right? The, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the. That's good, too high. So, see, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Is that too high for you? Yeah, let's lower it down. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Me. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Okay, so we've got our verses. Hot dogs. The hot dogs are hot dogs are awesome. White wine gives me headaches. One thing before we go and before before we sing our song and perform our big hit to, together, I, have a, I was just thinking. So a lot of the stuff we've been talking about here, like. The rhythm of the words and, and the rhyming and the emotional center and, and kind of the, 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 the content that, where does all that come from? How did all that develop? Do you guys have any ideas? Where did, why do we have that? Why do we use that? Yeah, but I mean, farther back, why, why do, do, we, do words have rhythm and why do we use rhyming? How do those develop? Well, while you think about that, I'm going to pull my, my iPhone out here and I can turn on the recording mode because I want to record our song. And guess what? 
iPhones have not been around forever. But before iPhones, there were recording studios. Before recording studios, there was pen and paper. Before pen and paper, there was what? Storytelling. And what, how do we keep that storytelling? Oral. And how did we remember things with oral tradition? With rhythm and rhyming and emotional center and understanding the content as it went together? So what I'm saying is, you are not just able to be a songwriter. You can't help but being a songwriter. You have hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. The thing that made us human first, the thing that allowed us to gather information, put it together, make sense of the world, and pass it on are the exact tools that we use for songwriting. Rhythm and words and rhyming and that, and that content. You not only can't avoid being songwriters, you, it's the essence of what makes you human. It's hardwired into you. Isn't that awesome? So here we go, we got hot dogs are awesome. White wine gives me headaches. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Dead Decimal System. Because this is a big hit, can we get people on stage and people up on, on your feet? Come on. We're going to sing along. It's a big sing along hit. Come on, up, 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 on your feet. Come on, come on, come on. Can I get some people to join me on stage? Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. This is going to be a big sing along. Yeah. It's your hit song. We don't want your hit song to fail. And then you're dancing. And come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. We're putting the band together. Okay, so. Hot, hot dogs are awesome. White wine gives me headaches. What again? Hot dogs are awesome. White wine gives me headaches. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Of course again. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Versus hot dogs are awesome. White wine gives me headaches. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Get your hand clap, you. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Let's go down to 3D camera here, ready? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. The Queen. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. I'm gonna stage dive. I'm gonna. St <laughs> Maybe not. Here we go. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I really miss the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah! <laughs> Put it together for the band. Put it together for yourselves. We have a hit record! Thank you.